Hi, my name's Ken Ellis. I have a passion for patient warming. I have dedicated the past 15 years of my life to a solution for warming all patients. It's been a mix of science, common sense, surgical staff input, and a passion for developing an art that warms all patients beyond a warm blanket or hot air. This effort came from the experience of my mom having surgery. She had a total left hip operation and she came out of surgery cold. It took hours to warm her. When I left the hospital that day, I got into a rental car that had heated seats, and I was struck by the idea that a car seat could warm and heat and keep me comfortable, but we couldn't do that for a patient in surgery. This event led me to the study of thermal transfer, the importance of maintaining patient normal thermia, and understanding that patient normal thermia is important to reducing postoperative infection rates and other adverse events. My mom's experience became the genesis for me to develop resistive warming for the patient in a surgical setting. What is resistive warming? Resistive warming is basic physics. It is the energy produced from exciting molecules of an element, the resistor. As these molecules move at a faster speed, they become thermal energy. Resistive warming is conductive warming, the physical contact with something warm. Since so little energy is lost in the transfer of heat to a surface, Resistive warming is the most efficient method of warming. The resistive element in the Pentler patient warming system is ink. Yes, ink. Ink is a carbon-based element that functions wonderfully as a resistor. The ink is baked to a mylar material and appears as a film. An added benefit is that ink does not interfere with x-ray nor patient monitoring. Take a moment and view these thermal images of an adult male. The image to your left is warmed by forced air. It demonstrates the inefficiencies of forced air and how it inconsistently warms topical skin and never delivers deep tissue warmth. Forced air achieves only topical warming and primarily at the forced air connection site. The image to your right is a thermal image of a resistively warmed adult male. It demonstrates a large area of actively and evenly warmed skin. Resistive warming delivers deep tissue warming. As you can see, the two methods warm very differently. Conductive warming delivers a very broad area of tissue warming, 10 times larger than forced air. The same holds true for a female subject. Topical warming versus tissue warming. These images tell the story. Resistive warming delivers more thermals to the patient with minimum loss of energy. Resistive warming is delivered to the patient in the most efficient and effective method. This is achieved safely, without noise, does not limit patient access, and does not add to the mountains of medical waste generated by single-use disposables. Additionally, the pad delivers the added feature of pressure reduction. The head, torso, and foot pads all utilize pressure reduction design pads incorporating high-quality viscoelastic foam, commercially known as memory foam. The power unit mounts to the anesthesia pole or other IV poles. No valuable floor space in the operating room is required. Operation of the unit is intuitive. Turn on, select the desired temperature, and patient warming is achieved. The power unit is connected to the pad by a ribbon cable. The small and low profile of both the control unit and ribbon cable were designed with a harsh operating room environment in mind. The silicone surface easily wipes clean. The ribbon can be knotted to shorten to the desired length. The control unit and pad are cleaned by standard OR cleaning procedures. Is the product safe? Are patient or staff burns a concern? Years of development, hundreds of thousands of procedures with the original design, and no adverse event has been reported. As a precaution, the Pentler patient warming system is equipped with an automatic safety power off with any warming temperature exceeding 42 Celsius. Can you x-ray through the pad? Yes, it is an integral part of the design. The ink is the secret. It is x-ray transparent. What is pressure reduction and how does it work with the Pentler patient warming system? Pressure reduction is dispersal of patient body weight over the broadest surface possible. The goal is to reduce pressure points that can damage tissue. In the Pentler pads, the best foams and pressure reduction design is applied to achieve the best pressure reduction results. 
We do not recommend using gel pads or other foams over the Pentler pad. They don't enhance pressure reduction. Why would using the Pentler warming system be more cost effective? Forced air warming, like bear huggers, can only be used once and they can cost up to $20 a patient. The numbers are simple. The average operating room cost for patient warming is $3,500 to $4,000 per year for forced air and only 50% of the patients are warmed. Add to that the cost of pressure reduction pads costing between $500 and $1,200 depending on quality and only lasting two years. The resistive warming and pressure reduction pad delivers skip compliance to every patient. Warming and pressure reduction without creating waste are requiring staff time. The cost of the Pentler warming and pressure reduction system is below $5,000. Pentler pads will easily last two to three years. In year three or four, you would only need to replace the Pentler pad, not the control unit. Can the operating room team evaluate the system before purchasing? Yes, but we ask that first there is funding to purchase in the next three to six months. What happens if a Orca seal cover is punctured or cut? Orca seal covered pads can be repaired. We have a kit for Biomed to repair the pad. What happens if the stretch vinyl cover is cut or torn? These covers come with a zipper for easy Biomed replacement. What can I tell anesthesia if they are currently using forced air? Show them the study performed at the Cleveland Clinic and other facilities that identify resistive warming as equal in outcome to forced air. I have Steris, Skytron, and Getting OR tables. Can you fit them? Yes, we can fit any type of operating room table. What surgical teams have been the first adopters of resistive warming? First adopters include on and off cardiac procedures, transplant teams, and orthopedic surgeons. With the evolution of SCIP and surgical site infection concerns, more general procedure rooms are adopting warming and pressure reduction for all patients. What type of cases is a Pentler warming system not a good option? A patient must be in contact with the pad for the Pentler warming system to effectively warm. Surgeries like lateral thoracotomies where the patient is on their side supported by a bean bag are not a good option. Can a Megadyne or gel pads be used with a Pentler warming system? Megadyne with a gel face and gel pads are both heat sinks. They reflect the room temperature. Warming the gel requires time and the patient's own body heat, making it an obstruction to achieving patient normal thermia. If the Megadyne is required, it is suggested that the Pentler unit be turned on overnight with the Megadyne pad placed on the Pentler pad. Alternatively, the Megadyne gel pad can be placed on the lower third of the torso pad. Check with your Megadyne rep before using the two together. Resistive warming is an evolving technology. It is efficient, it's clean, it's simple to use, it's minus waste, it's intuitive, and it's green. This technology delivers an actively warm, skip compliant patient to recovery every time without additional cost of staff or waste. This is about eliminating the use of disposables to warm patients. Resistive warming is economical and it is the future for all patient warming.